Today we are at Hammonasset State Park. This is the marsh, we're going to the beach, and we're gonna be walking through the campground. This is a place that I've gone to since I was born, even when I was one year old. This is my annual trip over here, Hammonasset. It's in Madison, Connecticut. We're gonna go for a little jog. Well, welcome to episode number eight of Running Rant. And today, as you saw in the little intro, we are at Hamnasset State Park, which is on the longest beach in Connecticut. So arguably Connecticut is just one long beach on the East Coast, but this is the longest beach in Connecticut. So we're gonna go for a run and tell you a little bit about some of my camping experiences. Some funny, some scary, some little insides and outs of the last uh, 25 years of being here. So uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. So right now we're on the beach. Now, as you saw, the campgrounds were over to our left. Quite frankly, there's nothing to our right but ocean or Long Island Sound for those of you who are not local. So we go for a light jog. Now, the first story I want to tell you is kind of a more of a scary one. This was two or three years ago. Uh, me and my friend were going all the way here to the beach because there's a big thunderstorm now. If you guys don't live near the water, it's really cool to see thunderstorms out on the ocean like this because it's so far away you can see it for miles so we came out here me and one friend came out here and we walked and we saw it rolling in now i didn't think this storm was supposed to be any crazier than any other ones i've seen but this one started rolling in way quicker than expected i have video on one of my phones about uh of that day it just exponentially got quicker and quicker until we were like, you know what, we should probably head out now. I would say it's about half a mile to get home. So we turn back, we start walking slowly. We're thinking we can walk that half mile pretty quickly. By the time we get home to our campsite, it'll maybe just gotten to us. We're walking no further than just to that camp store. And I'm telling you, that's like 30 second walk. The rain start just starts pouring in, crazy. Luckily I had, uh, well not really so much luckily, but I I took my phone and wrapped it in my shirt, just took my shirt off. My friend had like a DSL, DSLR camera, and I think he did something of the same, because it started coming down. Now the thunder and lightning is, you're seeing it and you're hearing it, boom, boom. It's instantaneous. It's one of those moments where you realize that mother nature doesn't give a shit, you know. She wants you done for, boom, crack. It was pretty scary. And we're walking maybe in real time, like five, seven minutes when it's raining and thundering, tack down a little bit. So we start picking up our step. We're running, we're talking to each other, but the rain is so loud, the thunder and lightning is just so crazy that we can't even hear each other. We're going through this one pass where we have marsh on our left, marsh on our right, kind of going over this bridge, small bridge, and it is just constant. Boom, boom, boom. Every which direction. And it truthfully had me scared. I can, I can say with 100% honesty that when I tell people the closest I've ever been to dying, this is one of the stories I tell them. Because at any moment could hit one of those trees and just fall on me. So we're, we're maybe 500 feet from our campsite and this car goes by, this truck. And keep in mind, it's so loud. There's so much white noise of thunder, lightning, rain that we're screaming to get this person's attention. And they stop. Probably one of the more stupid ideas we had was to hop in the back of their truck for them just to drive us down. Just in our heads, we just want to get there quicker. But the bed of a truck, like a, a pickup truck, is probably not the best, best idea. We do that, we get home, and we hop in a car, which was the safest spot that we can get to. I mean, my heart was racing as much as it is right now. So we get there, we stay in our car. I mean, the storm's not over, it's going so much. Within about a half hour, we end up seeing a tree, maybe as close as that lady is to me, that far away. To you, that's about 150, 200 feet away. Top, like a huge tree branch just fall on this person's tent. And it was just mayhem. Everybody in the camp just kind of swarmed towards it like ants to a piece of food. <sighs> Tried to help. The person was okay. That happened here at Hammonasset. And 
Probably the craziest storm story we had. Side note, there's some other quick stories before I get to the next one. I mean, I've seen it get so windy that it picks up people's fire pits because they're in like little buckets and literally will toss it. I've seen people's tents from the wind just whoop out, just fly to the ground. You wake up in the morning and it's just straight pancake. This is a place like I used to come to multiple times a year now. You know, at best, I go once. So that was a good storm story. Now another story that's gonna actually kind of take place where we are right now is right over along the, like kind of the sandbank over here is a road that runs parallel to the beach. That way cars like this guy can get to where he wants in the beach a little quicker by going on the road, then hop onto the beach with the access points. Well, the reason that we come every year is because of a meteor shower called the Persids. It's annual, usually peaks first or second week of August, which is why we're here. So me and my friend started walking from our campsite all the way to the beach. I am very well aware that you're not allowed to be on the beach at night. Now, I also know that the reasons you shouldn't be on the beach at night are not for the reasons that we're on the beach. You know, say what you will, but I still came over here. And we were walking. Oh, hey, look. Look at all these guys. So we're walking on the street parallel. Now, let's see if I can make this uh, pan picture for you. So you have, this is the water, my hand's the water. Here's the street, but there's a street kind of perpendicular. So we walked the perpendicular street and then came up parallel. We're walking that, that road for a while. We see a light from a car coming on that perpendicular road. We don't see it glaring at us, but we can just see increasing amounts of shadows because of this light coming this way. Remember, we're going this way. Me and my friend are like, okay, like, uh, you know, we know we, we shouldn't be here. Let's kind of, uh, let's kind of see what's happening. It could be someone with a flashlight or something. So we see the car bend around and right then we see it's like a cop car. But there's not really so much cops over here as there are state police, nature reinforcement. <laughs> so we knew, we knew we were in the wrong. So we kind of start like running a little bit. But keep in mind, we're running straight. The car's going straight. Now, at the last moment, I just straight Super Jimmy Fly snook and just whew, right into the bush. And I was not seen. Now, my friend, you know, this is straight out of like Indiana Jones just running straight away from something. Or in any of those movies, you're like, I'll just take a left or right like I did. My friend just keeps on going straight. Cop obviously goes whoop, whoop stops him it was all this literally happened like right over by this house by the way he stops my friend now keep in mind it's super dark it's just the light of his car he's not interrogating us with a flashlight he's just talking to my friend he's like hey do you know what's you know what's going on out here like what are you guys doing you know you're not supposed to be here he's talking to him doing his thing and i'm just right out on the sidelines eavesdropping I'm, I'm no more than maybe no more than 10 feet away could have quite, quite possibly been five i'm just listening to him and he's like, are you out here alone? He straight just draws my name. He's like, Jeff, get out here. I'm like, what? Throw me under the bus like that. I hop out. We talk to the guy. I tell him, I tell him nothing about the truth. I'm like, oh, listen, man, we come here every year for the Perseids, it's the annual meteor shower, so on and so forth. He just said, you know, get off, you know, don't go on the beach, don't be on this road. That was that. There's a great picture to go along with the story, which I will add over here. Me and him were definitely drinking at the time. And uh, here's the picture. This is a place that really encompasses more than just water, sand, and a spot to put your tent. It's been 25 years since I've uh, first gotten here. I've only missed one year, and that's because I was overseas. This is the type of place where in this school year when I was in school, it's a sanctuary where you were here and you knew school was over. You know, whether the year was great or horrible, right over here is where I found myself come July and August. I've done lots of my first year. The oceans brought me plenty of joy. Jellyfishing when I was younger. Crabbing when I was a little bit older. It's been everything. I've been on top of here watching the sunset. I've ran around like a little kid and I've jogged as an adult. There's nothing more beautiful to me than a place like this. It's a place I call home and once a year, large part of my family or family friends gather here sit by the fire 
and we enjoy ourselves a fantastic time camping. So if you guys have any stories like that, let me know. Well, I'm gonna keep dragging a little bit more. I'm gonna get all the way down there and maybe back down to the campsite. So thanks for tagging along. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. If you guys enjoyed this video, you know what to do. You can check out a playlist right over here of videos similar to this one. And if you want to see my most recent video, this is the video for you. Couldn't be a more beautiful day out here. Go outside, go do something great, and have a great day, guys.